obstacle. No, I think we should explore that, what you said earlier. When we add fire to fire, <laughs> we just get more fire. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to another Penguin Magic Top 10. I'm Eric Tate, the host of the Penguin Magic Podcast, and joining me today is Nick Popa. How you doing, Nick? I'm doing well. How are you? I am spectacular. Uh, I am very excited for this particular Top 10 because this one <laughs> is a little dangerous. Uh, we're talking Top 10 fire magic tricks. Yes, yes. You, uh, you're, you were a bit of a fire bug, I believe. <laughs> yeah, I like, to, uh, I like to say I'm a I'm an uncertified pyromaniac. I think that's a, that's a fair <laughs> thing. I should uh, go ahead and uh, give a disclaimer here. Uh, working with fire is always dangerous, so please be safe. Mm -hmm. uh, always do it in a well-ventilated area. Have fire extinguishers handy, and uh, don't do fire at people or anything like that. <laughs> Uh, but of course, uh, we're going to do a, a top 10 fire thing. Yeah. If, if anything, remember, these are all just like Nick's personal opinions here. So if we miss anything, if there's any like really great fire tricks, because I know there's a lot of them out there that we miss, let us know in the, uh, the comments below. And uh, of course, if, uh, if you hear a fire trick that is one of your favorites, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. But uh, Nick, why do you add fire to your act? I know why I add fire to my act. I, you know, it's just such a... It's a, a visually stimulating thing, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think fire is such a mesmerizing thing to, to look at. Yeah. And when you add it to fire, or <laughs> when, when you, you add it to magic, it, it, just, it just looks so much more mystical. No, I think we should explore that, what you said earlier. When we add fire to fire, <laughs> we just get more fire. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, it's really good. It, like, it definitely like, grabs attention. Mm -hmm. I know that I use fire occasionally on stage. Uh, I sometimes use fire, a little bit of smoke in my close-up stuff, mm -hmm. because it just does... It just gives that little. Ex it's um, it's a production quality exactly. thing. If you can if you can do fire safely in a controlled way, you can really add a lot of production to mm -hmm. your effects, and it really just makes it seem like you're that much more powerful. But let's mm -hmm. dive into it. What's uh, what's number ten? So number ten is uh, is flash cards, uh, just flash paper playing cards. Oh, so uh, I really like these because. They add for a really magical mm -hmm. way to change a playing card. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't use sleight of hand. You just have to lay this over top of another playing card. Literally and do a double lift. Light it on fire. Literally <laughs> just do a du like a double lift, mm -hmm. not even a double lift, and then it changes. Exactly. That is fan yeah, especially because you can probably get like uh, it'll it'll. Flash paper burns, but it's not always super fast. When it's mm -hmm. in a larger sheet, it'll probably slowly burn. Yeah, so it is a nice like, slow burn. Yeah. So you see the flame kind of go across the card as it turns into in, into the different card. Now, I am not, I don't actually, I've never messed around with the flash cards, but uh, how how close to real cards do they look? Like, pretty good? Like, if you put it on a table, could it vanish? If you... um, they, they do look a little lighter, uh, a little bit uh, like paper. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'd want to probably have it on top of another card. So you want to use it in conjunction yeah. with other cards. That's the way they're meant to be used. Yeah. Okay. That, well, I mean, that, and that's an important thing to consider whenever you're messing around with any sort of like mm -hmm. flash paper, flash cotton, flash string. Like if you're going to be using it, what is the context it's being used in? Absolutely. Because you might not be able to use it by itself mm -hmm. or things will look a little off. But fla yeah, flash cards is a really great, mm -hmm. uh, really great thing. Uh, get, let's move on to number nine. Number nine is another flash product. It it's uh, Pyroplastic by oh, Murphy's Magic. I have seen Pyroplastic. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice uh, sort of addition to the flash product family. Yeah. So if, if, you, if you use flash paper in, in any of your acts, mm -hmm. uh, Pyroplastic is an alternative. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it seems a little more natural because it's, it's essentially, it feels like the, the cellophane on, a, on your cards, on yeah. the box of cards, so you could theoretically tear that off of mm -hmm. your off your card box and use that as opposed to carrying around uh, little square sheets of paper with you. Yeah, it is one of those that it's like it's it's easier to mix that organically mm -hmm. into whatever your routine is. And you know, not that it's like hard to to work flash paper into something, but in order for it to be a little bit different and like we are used to paper burning, so a sort of brighter flash of paper mm -hmm. burning is is going to be surprising and magical, but making a piece of plastic sort of burst into flames is definitely going to be surprising because I don't know if a lot of you know this, but a lot of plastics, um, uh, especially in like the PVC world, is uh, self-extinguishing. So mm. you, if you hold a flame to it, it'll go out. Not all plastics. Do not set all plastics on fire <laughs> because uh, things. there's certain ones like styrene burns like a Roman candle. Mm -hmm. So you do want to be careful with that. 
Uh, so let's move on though to number eight. All right, number eight is Burn Notice by Chris Wheel. Oh, I'm not familiar with Burn Notice. So I, know, is... I know the show, uh, but I'm not sure if I, does anyone else remember the show? Just me? I think it's nope. just you. Okay, just, <laughs> all right. So hit me, what is, what is Burn Notice? So Burn Notice is an effect where you have uh, a receipt and you, a lighter, mm -hmm. and you, you hold the, the lighter uh, underneath the receipt and you get a bunch of uh, soot on the receipt, or mm -hmm. it, it could be a piece of paper, I believe, but uh, uh, the soot will reveal uh, something. It can reveal a playing card. Uh, essentially, it's just a really cool way to reveal okay. Uh, reveal a uh, spectator's thought. Yeah, anytime you're manipulating soot is really interesting. I'm definitely gonna have to check that out, but uh, that was an excellent number eight. Let's move into number seven. So number seven uh, is Ash Paper. <laughs> Another Flash product, mm -hmm. but this is by the other brothers. Mm -hmm. And uh, what this is, is uh, it's another way to uh, reveal something, but it uses uh, a special paper that when you burn it, mm -hmm. the ash is what, uh, is what rem uh, remains and reveals uh, the spectator's oh, thought. So it's like you're treating a piece of paper mm -hmm. so that the rest of it burns away clean, but the ash stays yes. behind. That is a really clever way to mm -hmm. do it. Now you're not just manipulating the soot on something else, you're manipulating the soot itself. Right. It's almost like it gives you like a pyrokinetic power, like you control where it's yeah. not burning. I, I'm sure you can get some really magical moments out of mm -hmm. that. And the other brothers always create some really wild stuff. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's uh, let's keep this uh, let's burn this into our brains as we get to I hate that I said that but we're gonna keep with it to number six. All right, number six is Flame by Murphy's Magic. What's oh is this the lighter that the the flame that moves up yes. off the lighter? Yes. Yeah, this is really interesting. Yeah, so it's uh, it's actually a take on an old Zippo trick that it's they, something you had to like like break a Zippo to be able to yeah, do this. Yeah, kind of. You did have to. You had to modify your Zippo a little bit to be able to do this, but they've actually created a, uh, a different style lighter mm -hmm. to make it look more of a, a Bic mm -hmm. or a, one of those uh, thin, thinner style lighters. Yeah. And uh, it's a way to, once you light the lighter uh, without any threads, yeah. <laughs> anything like that, cause the flame to lift off of the, uh, off the lighter yeah. and you can either make it uh, go back down or you can use it to light something um, mm -hmm. as a cool way for the flame to rise up to your flash paper and light yeah. it on fire. Yeah, it's really neat and it's it's well worth looking into not just from like the magician's perspective but like the forces at work to make it happen mm -hmm. are super interesting because it's like it's it's a fully contained safe to use product that uh, they're really capturing the physics behind yeah. what goes on because the, the way you used to have to like damage a, a Bic lighter to do this was kind of dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so being able to actually control it was really, really neat. I, I totally see why this is on the list. Yeah. Uh, but let's get to number five. Number five is Fire Kit by Martin Braces. What, now, is this, uh, this is presumably a number of different fire products that you can uh, combine in interesting ways? So it's, uh, it's a take on the, uh, the fickle fire uh, fire oh. in the palms. I and love that. Yeah. Also, crazy dangerous. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure he's fixed it so it's so not as dangerous. So this makes it a lot safer, and you can cause the fire to turn into uh, a number of different I items. You mm -hmm. can cause the fire to turn into uh, a stack of coins, mm -hmm. uh, a billiard ball, maybe uh, yeah. things that you can, anything that you can fit in your hands. Essentially, you could turn the fire into. That's so it's, awesome. a, it's a neat way to to produce stuff or as a way to just manipulate fire. I remember when I was first getting into magic, fickle fire was like super popular mm -hmm. and also, again, insanely <laughs> dangerous. And I just, I love that there's so much fire magic that is sort of coming back to the mm -hmm. fore that is really useful and, and it's, a, it's a lot safer to use now so you can take that really magical element of fire but also use it in a way that you know you're not gonna like hurt yourself or like grievously injure your audience. Right. It's, it's really, really great, the, the way that we're actually making fire magic safer these days. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was number five, let's get to number four. Number four is Light It Up by Sans Minds Magic. I am a big fan of this product, mm -hmm. I, because I, I use it in my act, but let's, let's tell everyone a little bit about what it is. So it's a Zippo lighter that you can place on the table and it will light on its own. Yep. 
and uh, that it's basically it. It's a That's self-lighting Zippo lighter. It's totally under your control too, mm -hmm. which is really nice. And, and they've got multiple settings on it, so you can choose that it lights up after three or uh, three to five seconds, mm -hmm. which is what I usually do. Or you can even have a longer time delay, like ten to fifteen seconds. Um, I, I use this in a really dumb routine with a wooden card duck. Uh, if you watch my Penguin Live Act, you can find out how I use it. Uh, but I've also used it in. Uh, Actually, for uh, I combined it with Brent Braun's Torched and Restored. Okay. Uh, so I've talked about how, like, uh, you know, the playing card is a, it's an illusion or something like that, and uh, if the that I can uh, light the lighter uh, by itself and then like rest, uh, restore the card, but then when the light uh, the fire goes out, I'm like, you know, where did the light come from? Uh, then the smoke comes out later because I combine it mm -hmm. with the smoke device, so the fire and the smoke are separated. That's but cool. It is. It's a well-made product. It is. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I used to use it a lot when I uh, when I would do walk around. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it was just a really nice way to uh, to add some fire to your yeah. uh, to your magic uh, when you needed to light something. It was it was just a little cooler than pulling out a lighter and mm -hmm. lighting it. I could add another uh, minor magic effect to that that's, by setting it on the table. That's really what Light It Up is all about, mm -hmm. is that, you know, just having it where you set on the lighter and then it lights up is neat, but it's not its own trick. It's oh, no. really best used as like an additional moment yeah. in a larger routine. And and I I really like that product. It's, mm -hmm. it's really well made. One of, one of the better things that Sans Minds has ever come out with as yeah. far as products. So. And I believe they actually just uh, put out a new version that has a remote control with it, it now. It is remote control, and I actually just placed down my pre-order <laughs> for it because, uh, because the remote control version is going straight into yeah. the current act. Uh, but I'm, I'm super excited about that. So, Definitely, easily a top four. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's get to number three. Number three is Pyrokinesis 2.0 by Chris Smith. What is Pyrokinesis 2.0? So this is uh, the matchbook that bursts into flames. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah, where you're just holding the matchbook and then mm -hmm. suddenly, boom. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's such a visually stunning effect. Uh, you just you hold a, a matchbook at your fingertips and all you have to do is concentrate mm -hmm. and the the entire book of matches bursts into flames is this is this got additional effects like the old uh unlit match jumps back I to believe, the matchbook yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah cuz there's there's some really great old tricks you can do with the matchbook where you can like tear out a match and like set it aside and then tear out another match burn the matchbook and then the, vanish the original match and it jumps back into mm -hmm. the matchbook oh man i haven't thought about that trick in years it's so good uh but I think I think with Pyrokinesis 2.0 you can make that happen. Yeah, I, it's definitely a, a trick you could do in conjunction with it. Yeah, yeah, it's so, a really solid effect, mm -hmm. and and it's such a good creator too. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, moving into the, we got we got two left. Yep. And uh, I'm curious because I, I know one that I think is going to be in there, and I'm curious if it makes one or two. Uh, what is number two? Number two is In a Flash by Jay Sankey. One of my favorite Jay Sankey card tricks ever. I had mine as well. Forgotten about it until you said <laughs> it this moment, but it is. Well, tell everyone what In a Flash is because so, it's so good. Yeah, so you have uh, you have a card selected, and the card could be signed, and then you have a uh, you have a coin signed as well, a quarter, and you wrap the quarter in some flash paper, place it on top of the deck, and when you light the flash paper, the coin uh, burns through about half the cards, mm -hmm. and is it stops on one card. And that card is their signed card. I used to when I worked in a in a, like a physical brick and mortar magic shop. Mm -hmm. I pitched in a flash all the time because it's so much fun to do, and it's such a magical moment when you're looking down at that deck, and the coin is in a hole mm -hmm. in it, and it and it almost it's one of those tricks that looks better the more you use it because it creates more and more carbon and more and more smoke yeah. around those other cards. But they his handling of the routine hides so much of that mm -hmm. that you don't see those burn marks until you absolutely need to. Yeah, and with his updated uh, with his updated gimmicks, the it's not just a circle anymore. It's mm -hmm. actually the like a, a, a burned yeah. hole. It's like and, ragged. Yeah, it's jagged and yeah. stuff and it really looks as if that coin melted through the deck. Yeah, it, I mean, Jay has come up with some amazing stuff over the years and you know, I mean the guy is so prolific, but in a flash is a really solid mm -hmm. effect, and anyone wanting to add just a little bit of fire and a really sort of offbeat effect, especially as a closer. If you, you know, especially if you do like a whole bunch of card tricks, and then you put the deck away, then you do something else, and you go, you know, let's do one more card trick, and you bring in the mm -hmm. in, a, in a flash deck. You, I mean, it's it's a stunner. Yeah, it really is. All right, that brings us to number one. 
what is your number one trick with fire? Number one trick with fire has got to be Flare by Nicholas Lawrence. I thought that Flare would be coming up. I really like Flare. I love Flare. This yeah. is one of the one of the most genius fire shooting uh, uh, gimmicks on the market. Yeah, and I, I tell you, th there's been other uh, markers that uh, that shoot fire, mm -hmm. and the reason I like Flare is because I own three of them. Because I, I do use Flare. I use Flare in a little bit of a different way okay. uh, when I go into my uh, uh, when I go into my gigs, but the you know. We, I think we all know what flare is. It's a, it's a apparently a marker that shoots fire, but it's a battery and an ignition chamber. Mm -hmm. And the genius behind flare is that they separate. Yes. So what I, the reason I bought three of them was because I have the ignition chamber. I load three of those, mm -hmm. and I have them on me. And so when I do, when I do flare. I can then very quickly unscrew one chamber and then screw on another one because oh, yeah. loading these things is a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. Any sort of like any sort of fire shoot, yeah. I don't matter. I don't know. I don't care whose it is or what it is. Loading it one on one is a problem. Yeah. And what Nicholas did with making separating the battery from the ignition chamber really makes it a worker. Uh, and I don't know if we'll ever release this, but uh, I actually came up a w with a way to load it. Uh, so that it is a confetti cannon. It's a this, tiny little confetti cannon. I think you can find it deep in my Instagram. I, when you showed this to me here at the studio, I lost it. It was, it was the funniest thing that I've ever seen with it. Yeah. And I will give you some credit. You worked with me a little bit on the load because uh, w when Flair was first coming out, I came up with this idea. And I think we were right over there on the other side of the studio and you were working on something over here. Uh -huh trying to get all the product shot done. And I think we, I went through like 10 or 15 different <laughs> loads. And sometimes like the, the confetti wouldn't come out. Uh -huh. Sometimes it would come out way too fast, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I don't recommend you loading things other than flash paper into the ignition chamber, but there is a safe way to do it for to make it into a confetti cannon. Yes. It's a it's a really well designed, really mm -hmm. well made gimmick. And uh, and it's a lot of fun as, to use. And if you, if you never do magic with it, the best way to use flare is to take it to the family <laughs> Thanksgiving party and say, who wants to shoot fire out of a marker? Yes, it is not only a wonderful magic prop, but it is even better as a toy. It's so <laughs> much better as a toy. Uh, I've, I've actually used flare on a camping trip to light <laughs> oh, uh, a campfire. Um, uh, there's, there's, flare really is, is uh, it's a survival tool. Yeah. Right? Not really just a magic <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's really great, and I, I can see why it's at the top of your list. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if any of you have any uh, any other fire magic products that you like that we didn't have on here, be sure to drop it in the comments. Uh, if there's if there's a way that you use flare uh, to add to your magic, please let us know. And of course, if any of these things has really ignited uh, <laughs> your flame for magic, be sure to hit that like button. And of course, always uh, subscribe so that you can find out more top 10 lists coming out from Penguin Magic. Thanks to Nick for joining me. Uh, my name is Eric Tate. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.